his job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. <laughs> We're here with another edition of the Working Lunch Radio Hour. I'm Jeff Turgeon, the host of the show, along with... Sean Magali, the co-host of the show. <laughs> and we're from the Central Mass Workforce Investment Board. The, uh, our board oversees the public workforce system in Worcester and 37 surrounding communities in southern Worcester County, helping bring to one, one uh, unified table the voices of, of it, business and industry, as well as education, economic development, in other uh, in other workforce related uh, groups and entities and agencies, so I'm excited to to be here today. We actually yeah. have a guest producer today. Yeah. Super producer Rob is in Kansas City for it, Skill Path. That's right, Skills USA. Oh, which, Skills Skills USA, I'm which sorry. is an it's it's an amazing program. It takes uh, young people from across the country that qualify through local competitions. Uh, it, vaca- vocational schools. Vocational schools. They they basically it's vocational school programs. They they qualify by going to competitions where they demonstrate their knowledge of a given task or or, or knowledge area, and then uh, those presentations are judged, and then the winners get announced, and those winners uh, earn the right to go to the national finals. I know there's there's um, you know several from Central Mass that that have made it, including students from uh, I believe Worcester Tech and uh, and Bay Path. Um, you know, as well as Monty Tech up to to the north of us. So yeah, and, and you actually did them. some judging of of skills USA. I don't want to brag. I don't want to brag at all, but uh, <laughs> but I'll brag a little bit. It was an amazing day. It was amazing. I, was, they asked I don't me want to, be, but I will. Uh, bit. You know, yeah. So I was a, a judge over there um, at the competition uh, a couple months ago, and and just a great day. And these young people are so focused uh, and so into seeing young people so into you know their their uh, chosen career path and their trade and you know, just um, proud of what they know and, and anxious to show it off. Of course, there's a bit of uh, a nervous to get in front of a you know a oh, panel I bet, of judges. I bet, and, I bet. You know, which which one did you judge? Uh, well, it was like a general competition, so um, I was like in the general category, which was so you know like everything from um, uh, students that uh, did culinary production. So like basically oh, okay. almost like a mini cook. They had you know it's funny because these things are, are rigidly timed too, so they had to be between three and a half minutes, I believe in like six minutes and if you go a little bit over you get deducted for points if you go under you're deducted for points oh. and so we had you know young people making different sauces for us right in front of us we had a gentleman who's showing us how to do a weld another uh gentleman who's who was actually as part of like the enrichment piece was showing how to um to do a specific beat on on a drum oh. and how to incorporate that into a march and it was Very i nice. mean Really, like uh, you know, a little bit of everything. As you, as uh, you know, some hairdressers that did some different things. I learned how to do. Uh, I, I am the I am the father, proud father of, of <laughs> ponytail champ. Of <laughs> you know where I'm going with this one. <laughs> so uh, so I have two uh, two daughters and a son, and and uh, so I, I learned how to do a sock bun. <laughs> That's a tough technique. I it is well, you know. That's so, how I lost all my hair. And so I was proud to go home and and uh, you know pull my daughters over to start. Uh, Start uh, demonstrating to them that I knew how to do this. I think, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, and Bob was telling me. My wife me was horrified. No, you're not touching me. Bob was yeah. telling me you were quite the, uh, quite the tough judge, too. He said you were the Simon Cowell of Skills USA. Yeah, you know, I, I guess they frown on making kids cry. Uh, yeah. you know, apparently Even when you fake an accent. The, the, uh, British <laughs> 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 no, actually, uh, you know, everything went well. And there's, there's really not, uh, you know, you, the judging is kind of done behind the scenes. Um and so there's not like a question and answer kind right. of thing, but but uh, just an amazing again amazing day. And so for those young people and for our producer Bob Zakowski, who's a, a he's been you know with the Skills USA program for a while, and uh, he, so he's out in Kansas City on the national panel, hopefully uh, listening with all this. I I would expect him to right, <laughs> absolutely. And so we do have with us a uh, super producer, part local two, celebrity, right? local celebrity. Uh, Troy Tyree, thank you for for filling in so ably for us. My pleasure, thank we're off, you. We're off to a great start uh, with the theme playing on time. That was great. So, um, and and our theme was produced by uh, a local uh, 
rising superstar Jesse Edwards. Yes. So, hey, lots going on out there in the workforce world, not the least of which is the launch officially, uh, finally, I guess you might say, of an online system for unemployment insurance. Right, right. So, uh, starting July 1st, uh, claimants and, uh, and companies will be interacting with the program, with the unemployment insurance program through an online portal. So right now, or, or the older system, yeah. people could actually go to the career centers, and there was a walk-in capacity. There was a walk-in capacity, and then, and then most of the people were, were kind of uh, referred over to the phone system. The phone system is still going to be there, Yep. Uh, but it'll be uh, combined with this new online. And so um, the walk-in component is technically going away. There'll still be um, access to the computers at the career centers. Um, just with, no staff member there. Too. Yeah, I mean there'll be there'll be you know some staff to give some very guidance, basic guidance, yeah. um, but we don't want to overstate that case. It's not like you know the staff are going to be doing every step of the process with, with people, but the, so there'll be some some uh, uh, staff there to assist people mainly with getting into the portal and making sure that they kind of you know understand kind of the screens that they're seeing. Um, and then uh, we're also going to be working with community partners. Uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of folks that that lack computer access. Um, and so, uh, you know, being able to go to the Wish Public Library, Library or to, you know, some of our community partners that are out there, that ought to be a great help to them. And so we'll be, um, we'll be launching that. And it's also, you know, so it's, it's an exciting step for the program. Uh, yeah, I was about to say change is, is sometimes good. I, I was reading a little bit about it, and it sounds like there's going to be, instead of only being able to file for five days a week, now it's actually, actually expanded to seven days a week. Seven days. There is a window of time each day where they where they take all the information that's been loaded in and they have to actually process that to, to get checks out, to update um, accounts or whatnot. So it's not actually a 24-7 operation. Right, but but the even the time is expanded. Instead yeah. of normal business day hours, it's it, now, it's, I think... It's up to 10 five o'clock. To, uh, what is it, 5 to 10 p.m.? 10 p.m. So, um, and, and so, yeah, so hopefully it'll be more convenient for folks. I think there's going to be obviously a bit of... Transition Adjustment period, right? with the transition, transition, but then once that happens, uh, you know, the hope at the Kerr Center is that, um, you know, folks will get seamless service with this system in support of the great career pathway counseling that they can get uh, and job guidance and, and, and placement assistance that they can get through the career center. So, you know, I think one of the challenges, especially lately with the, with the downturn in the economy the past few years has been, um, you know, career center staff have had to kind of manage this mm -hmm. flow, uh, overflow, if you will, of people who had employment insurance related problems or issues or questions. And now, Hopefully, a, a large majority of those folks will be able to get self-service right online, convenient, fast, efficient, um, you know, service, which would allow the career center to kind of readjust back to where their vision, you know, originally was, yep. which yep. was really kind of concentrating on uh, helping bridge that gap between employers and their and their needs uh, with job seekers, and really kind of helping make that bridge and 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 really helping uh, job seekers understand, you know, what's out there for them. Uh, what what they should be doing if if they're if they're you know struggling to find uh, reemployment uh, or employment in, in some cases so um, you know it's an opportunity I think for the career centers to uh, kind of rebrand themselves back to what they had I think all along had, had hoped to be doing and, and concentrating on yeah. And I also just wanted to mention, too, some of the new things that you're going to be able to do online. Uh, you're going to be able to check status of your claim. You can change your tax withholding deductions. You can manage direct deposit arrangements, mm -hmm. and you can also submit extended benefit work search logs. So there's going to be a lot you can. Yeah, I mean the system is set up to, to you know, for that initial filing, and then for the support that's needed uh, on a regular basis. So it's really set up to be uh, kind of doing it all right there. Yeah. Do we want to give a give out the um, the website and the number? Yeah. I, again, I, it's not going live uh, until July first. July first. Beginning July first. And for folks that are seeing this on the uh, the television, uh, <laughs> probably will be after July first. So uh, why don't you go ahead and give us give us it's, the address? It's www.mass.gov backslash dua. So it's it's www.mass.gov back forward slash backslash. Forward slash, I think forward slash. Forward slash. Forward slash DUA. So, got to get my slashes right, right? I got to get, get mine right, I guess. Get up to speed on this, on this slash business. So, uh, I did mention that we have uh, uh, Troy helping us out. Now, Troy, I think, are you going to switch 
chairs to do this, is, or can we move the camera to get uh, to get an interview? So okay, so we're gonna we're gonna actually have a chat with with Troy, who's the uh, uh, manager here, WCUW, um, and so want to talk to him. A lot of a lot of exciting things happening here. Fortieth uh, anniversary year. We're in. Uh, we're moving into our fortieth year year here as community radio. Yes. Well, Very I excited by that. I I I um. Forty years. That's great. Yeah, and I and I'll be up. I'll I'll be uh, upfront and honest. I I had a bit of an issue the other day. Um, I, I tried to become a member of WCUW. It's a pretty funny story. So <laughs> I was all proud. Oh, Bob Bob Zukowski's in my office, and uh-huh. he's uh, you know longtime producer here, sure. member and volunteer here. So uh, it's so I said, Bob Bob. I I signed up for the radio station. <laughs> I I signed up. I got my membership dues in, and I'm all set. You know, I just did. I'm all proud and everything. And he says, "Well, great. All right." You know. So I said, uh, "Yeah, take a look. You know, here's my receipt." And he goes, "Well, that's that's." A different, <laughs> different, state. different radio station. <laughs> I think it was WICN. Was it I a backslash uh, forward slash? Yeah, the, you know, <laughs> apparently. So, um, so you know, I, I I've been meaning to to join. I, it, it's just a wonderful resource for the community. Sure. And membership driven. And well, we'll have to correct to, that situation. Well, that's what I'm. So, that's what I'm getting nothing, at. I, I definitely need to. There's nothing wrong with supporting WICN as well. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know, sure. another another great uh, station that's out there. So more than happy to do it. But so tell us, 40th anniversary year. Sure. Well, let's back it up even a little bit further. We were actually founded in uh, 1920 by Robert Goddard from uh, at Clark University. Robert Goddard at that time was, uh, you know, obviously an experimenter, and uh, radio at the, in those in the early years obviously yeah. was an, exper- an ex- experimentation in a new media. And uh, yes, he had the foresight, I suppose you might say, to uh, bring some uh, money together and actually get a radio up and running. So talk uh, about a visionary, though. Here's a man that yes. was involved on the forefront of two major, uh, y- you know, societal changes in that time. You know, yes. the, the radio, as you just mentioned, also yeah, is the father of modern and rocketry. Right so. into the 30s and the, the, the modern rod- rocketry, exactly. Yeah, talk yeah. about, uh, you know, some exciting And uh, we were on campus there things. up until, uh, well, through the years. Yeah. And uh, as low, low, uh, actually just confined really to the uh, to the campus itself, and then uh, AM signal came along, then an FM signal came along, and I believe it was in, in the early 70s, it could have been 1973, but uh, we incorporated actually in 1973 as community radio, so that's where we sort of take our, the birthday from. Nice. Yeah, yeah great. But it is, and, and if you go back for your full history, I believe it's one of the longest... One of the earliest uh, call signals that was... Uh, yeah. Given out, and no, I didn't do any research on that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't even ask. <laughs> Excellent, but no, exciting history. So, and and yes. for and I know that you have a membership drive going on, and it's a great opportunity for folks to get into radio, right. and that's one of the the um, features of of being a member of the community radio station is that is that you can you can come in, work with staff here, work with some of the shows that have got going on, maybe sure. even how if folks had an idea for a show, how might they, right. they go about working well, with Well, B- Bob Zandowski is a perfect example. He had this idea, he approached us with this idea for yeah. this very radio show, and uh, Bob has been with us for numerous years as host of the uh, Polka Party that's yeah. now on Saturdays, Saturday and Sundays from 2 to 4, give him a little plug. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he says, I have this idea for a radio show, and he says, well, uh, you know, the, put it put it on paper, and in actuality, you can go yeah. to our website, wcuw.org, and uh, just scroll down, and you'll see that there's an application form there for a uh, program suggestion, you know, a program suggestion yeah. form. Now, do and folks yeah. have to, have to um, folks can come in and just work with, with, sure. with, with, with this? Well, let's say, just too, to right? stay on the website, just uh, briefly, there's uh, also on there a volunteer form. So folks, you'll be coming in as a new volunteer, and also mm-hmm. if you have an idea for a program. Uh, we ask folks to complete those, and then we do have a process. We have a volunteer coordinator who will uh, reach out to them, and, and folks will come in and have an interview and find out a little more about the individual and their, their interests and skill set and that kind of thing. But just a great uh, opportunity to get oh, involved and, and learn it's, the ropes in radio and, and, and start with that. I know there have been some alumni from the station here that right. have gone on to professional they careers. They have gone on to professional careers, and uh, we're excited in that you know, we are in our 40th year, and Starting to put together our 40th anniversary party, which will be mm-hmm. taking place at the end of October, and I guess I'm officially announcing this yeah. right now. Wow! So, uh, breaking news breaking on the news. working lunch. <laughs> uh, working with uh, John Lavin, who was actually the one who put the incorporate incorporation papers together and uh, incorporated us as uh, 
uh, community radio, he, uh, he and another individual here in, in Worcester, he's actually in California, uh, they're reaching out to all the alumni that they can get hold of, and uh, hopefully the, oh, great. the uh, last Saturday of October, we're having uh, a big gala, and a lot of those alumni will be coming back. So, Oh, that's super. Yes. Now, now, how did you make your way here to the, to the station? Yourself? Well, I actually, um, I, back in my 20s, uh, had an interest in radio, uh, 1979, actually, mm-hmm. is when I had my very first radio show. Actually, I took it on as a challenge from a friend. This is Fort Wayne, Indiana, Indiana Purdue University. Sounds like he dared you to. to <laughs> well, we have a name of the program. <laughs> is there a name for the, the, yeah, the program? Yeah, do you remember the name of the, 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 the program? Style? Can we get oh, that? Of course. What well, was a jazz program? Actually, I did jazz programming for a number of years. Uh, but uh, it was in uh, uh, spring of 79. I had my first show. And uh, it was in 1982, I migrated out here uh, to Massachusetts and was at Tufts University for three years, a uh, radio show there, and then moved to Worcester in 1985. And course found WCUW and uh, it's uh, you know here we are so how long have you been the the station's manager since uh, 2008 okay yeah past four and a half going on five years now well it's great uh, and and we appreciate uh, the fact you've been so willing to work with us to create this show and and all the other work that you're doing you know out in the community has you know Mm -hmm. just been fabulous and yeah and, and Troy I heard you say there's a volunteer coordinator so besides producing a show, what, what other kind of volunteer opportunities are available here at the station? Well, we, uh, we're always looking for pr- production assistance. Uh, folks that sit in this chair as I'm sitting right now, uh, or mm-hmm. Bob usually does when he's, you know, when he's doing uh, your program. Uh, we have opportunities just throughout the day and evening and weekends uh, mm-hmm. for these kind of, this kind of position, shall we say, assisting the uh, on-air DJ. So learning how to use the equipment, exactly. getting experience um, either, either on both sides of kind of the microphone, if you will. You right. Know. Um, for folks, I know that the um, the range of programming on your schedule kind of speaks to that real community involvement. It everything, does. From, oh, it's everything, yeah. From ska and 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 you know rap to um, polka to polka to right doo wop, right yeah, doo wop, of course, some great stuff. Uh, Italian programming, we got the Scottish, the Irish, the Albanians. Uh, I'm going to resist my uh, my urge to do different accents right now. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, accent don't do show. That. <laughs> You just throw them out, you know. Yeah. You so, know, so we do have, we have uh, about 120 volunteers total yeah. uh, keeping the operation running. Uh, f- folks have, have been here, some folks were, we have actually a, a new gentleman uh, literally in the production room right now learning how to, uh, uh, the, the, the ropes, and uh, he's going to be on air here next month for, with his very first program. Uh, to folks like Bob or, or uh, uh, Bud Sargent, who've been here for 25 plus years. Well, is there so anything else that you want to highlight? I know that um, you know as a community radio station, you um, you know you're always you know on the lookout for uh, you know for donations. Oh, we are. For, yes. You know whether it's whether I'm sure either well, would, in kind right. in, you know with like equipment to, or whatever. I would like to stress we are member supported. A mm-hmm. lot of people will confuse us, uh, and that we are community radio. And a lot of people will confuse us with national public radio or NPR, as you might see on Channel Two or you know WGBH mm-hmm. uh, WBUR. All very important to the overall uh, radio re- ecosystem. Y- you've got it exactly, and they they need to be supported. They truly do. Yeah. But unlike those radio stations, we obviously have a much shorter uh, range than they do. We do uh, we don't receive any state or federal. Well, although funding. that being said, you're now streaming on we the are internet. In the web, yes. So the range is. Oh uh, well, we're expanded. worldwide. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the terrestrial signal, shall we say, though. Yeah. Uh, is you know it doesn't have the uh, the scope that they do. And uh, yes, it's the members that really do support us. That's uh, the bulk of our. Well, I'll tell you, I'm amazed at um, at how many people come up to me and they say, um, you know, hey, you know, we heard you on the radio. Yep. Um, we also, you know, with the folks at the at the at the government channel uh, TV. Hey, I saw on the TV, I heard you on the radio. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, speaking and of Bob's show, I mean, I'll be, I'll be, have scan on on my radio, and I'm going driving around, and I'll, I'll hear Bob's voice. I say, hey, I know that, and I'll stop and I'll listen for it. Yeah, yeah. But, it, in my area, it's kind of spotty up in the hills. I live in Douglas, and, oh, okay, uh, and sure. up on the hills, I'll be able to get it. But as soon as we go into a valley, right. <laughs> well, our, our, <laughs> but it does extend that far. Yeah. So, yeah. The, uh, we're, we're extremely proud of the web signal, but a, a piece of that actually was to be able to serve folks who are local to us. Once you do get in the house uh, in the lower valley, sometimes you can't uh, pick us up. But now you just flip on the computer and yeah, exactly. stream us in. And, mm-hmm. Well, um, and we'd like to say hello to those web streamers right now. There we go. We, 
which we know we have uh, a handful of. You know. Yeah. Right. It's Good afternoon nice to have to them you. out there. <laughs> yes. So, um, well, actually, I, Troy, I wanted to ask, uh, 40 years, there's a lot of history in this building. Oh, and is. I want to know, besides Jeff, who's the most famous person that's been <laughs> in this studio? Prefacing it, but <laughs> besides, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that really is a hard one to that's say hard because one? Yeah. We've, had, um, we've had numerous guests come in. You know, the, uh, uh, we do live interviews. Uh, mm-hmm. We have the front room performance space here yeah. uh, that uh, folks can, uh, you know, come and perform. And uh, that's, that's a tough one. I don't know that I can answer that. So we'll go with Jeff as the most famous. We're going to go <laughs> with now. Jeff right for now, now. Yeah, for the moment. So, the, well, how about the young lady behind the... the Jessica. Jessica. Yeah, yeah there Jessica you go. Maybe, yeah. So, well, thanks for uh, filling in today sure. and being our producer and for talking to us. For uh, Our theme today is volunteering and, and volunteerism. And, uh, you know, so we're going to be talking with a few people about that and, and highlighting a program. Sean uh, is a little bit later going to be highlighting a new program that we've um, worked with the uh, staff at uh, Workforce Central Career Center to, to implement. And, uh, and so it's going to be exciting to, uh, to hear about that. I think we're going to take a, a short break. We're going to come back. We're, speak, we're going to be speaking with uh, Carrie Sandberg, who's the director of community service over at the United Way. Anyway, so yeah. we're going to take a break and, and come back with, with that interview. You're in tune to WCUW 91.3 FM, community radio serving central Massachusetts, online at wcuw.org. Okay, we're back at the Working Lunch Radio Hour. Uh, we're joined by Carrie Sandberg, who's the director of community service at the United Way of Central Massachusetts. Carrie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm just, you know, I I paused for a second there because I'm always thrilled when the technology kind of works. And it sounds like official too. It does. It sure does. You said you're coming in, you're coming in great on, uh, at least through my new headphones that I'm wearing today. Which look really nice. So, uh, Tell us a little bit. We, I, you know, we know that the United Way is obviously very involved with uh, volunteerism, which is the theme of our show. Can you can you tell us a little bit about some of the work that uh, some of the volunteer work that that you do out there? Sure. Uh, well, the Volunteer Center is a program of United Way. It's been in operation in this community since about 1967, so it's a long-standing tradition of being involved in, in community service and volunteerism. Um, we act as the, a portal for community members uh, to understand what's going on in the community and to engage in volunteerism. Um, we work with hundreds of different nonprofit organizations in the community, and we help them to develop volunteer opportunities. We help strengthen their capacity to do the good work that they do uh, by um, by helping them to effectively utilize volunteers. So we work a lot with the nonprofit community to, to build that capacity, and we work a lot with um, individuals, corporate groups, youth, um, a wide variety of people to help them understand what's available and connect them to the right opportunities. So we do that in a lot of different ways. Um, I would say for people that are sort of generally seeking volunteer opportunities and want to know what's going on in this community, we offer an online uh, system through our uh, website that lists couple hundred different opportunities and agencies um, it was a wide range of opportunities whether you're interested in long-term opportunities which is you know six months or longer short-term opportunities well while you're out of school or one-time opportunities um, you know sort of a done in a day project uh, there's really something for everyone um, that, that that can find that wants an opportunity can find one so there's right. all kinds of interesting things going on well I know I, I I've been able to check out the portal and, and see that. It's amazing the, the breadth and scope of nonprofit uh, organizations that are out there in our community and you know to have them all kind of in one database that folks can can look at is uh, is pretty impressive. So we appreciate the, the work that you've done to kind of um, uh, you know bring that together and help make that connection. Sean's got Sean from the from the show here is going to be talking a little bit later with uh, one of the Career Center staff that that is working with um, works very closely with that portal through volunteer the program, connections, the and volunteer the connections central, program. Yeah. Now, now, Carrie, I, you know one of the other things that uh, that I know I'm familiar with is the Day of Caring. Yes, and that uh, puts you know literally you know hundreds, if not thousands, of folks out in the community for for a day long activity and kind of bring folks you'd mentioned kind of shorter term projects. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. Benefit? Sure. Day of Caring, we're in our 20th year this year, so we're excited about that. So 20 years of, of providing volunteers in this sort of one-day um, volunteer event. Uh, we have probably close to 100 projects that will be offered on September 12th, 
and we encourage everyone in the community to get involved. Uh, we have a lot of corporate support in this community, a lot of faith-based groups, uh, college student groups, and individuals and families. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a great mix of people coming together um, to to sort of celebrate volunteerism, to become active in the community, to get a taste for what's out there. Um, it, it, Day of Caring is a great opportunity for people who want to get involved, but they're not sure what they want to do. It allows them to sort of introduce them to the different nonprofits in the community, to get an understanding of the work that's being done in the community, um, and maybe they'll continue on for a longer term. Well, I know it's also a great opportunity for, for business organizations to do a bit of team building, uh, to get their staff out as a team. Um, I know that, that uh, you know, in the workforce uh, board, our, our staff uh, had, had uh, been involved in you know, had gone out. And it was, you know, it was a great day. It was a great time. Um, we all basically, uh, you know, took some time off from work to took took a little personal time from work to um, to get together. And you know, it it, it was a great team building. Uh, you know, in in exchange for also helping, or in addition to also helping out with a local community group. Um, you know, it was a great it was a great day for for us as a team. You know, to kind of spend some time working together on a joint project and to feel that sense of accomplishment when, when at the end of the day you look back at, at all that you did together. So, so um, that's, that's a great way for folks, you know, to, to get out there. Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's, it's really nice to know as well that these nonprofit agencies are working on an absolutely bare-bones budget, and the work that volunteers are doing really are making a huge difference. It's work that would not be done otherwise in this community. And to know that, you know, you're doing something of value, and you're really making a huge difference to those nonprofits, I think, is also you know, what makes the day so great. Well, we appreciate that. Now, I, so fo- it's going to be happening in September, September 12th. Um, is there a way folks can, is it through your website that, that they may sign up for that or inquire more about that? Yes. Um, there's two shifts. You can do a morning and afternoon or an all day. Um, you can go to United Way's website, unitedwaycm.org. If you're an agency, you can sign, you can register a project idea. If you're a volunteer, you can sign up yourself or you can sign up a team. And once you sign up, if you're not committed to anything. It just means you'll get put on our list to receive more information. Great, great. Now, I also have, know that you have, a, I, I believe, a new initiative uh, this summer working with, uh, with teens. We have a great summer youth program, um, and it's taken several different iterations over the years. This okay. is our third year of, of this particular offering. Oh, great. Um, okay. It's a program that is for uh, high school age students, 13 to 17 years old. Um, it, uh, it gives them a sort of a calendar of, of volunteer opportunities that they can pick and choose from. We usually offer about three or so per week, and the program runs now through the end of August. So uh, students can take a look at, at a ver- and try out a, a wide variety of different ways uh, to get involved. It allows them to fulfill their community service hours, uh, meet new people, have some fun, while at the same time really contributing to the community. Uh, so students can do all kinds of things. Um, we're helping out at a theater production. We're doing some community gardening. Um, we're doing some mentoring activities, uh, some cleanup uh, activities as well. Um, as well as helping out at the Big Dipper Ice Cream Festival, which is a big thing in this community. And well, that sounds like a pretty good uh, <laughs> way for that. Event. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's you know it's it's a great way to get involved. It's you know you don't have to commit to the entire series. Uh, if you have you know one or two days available, um, it's just a nice way to new, sure. meet new well, people. You know, we at the at the Workforce Board, of course, uh, uh, oversee the Youth Works Summer Jobs Program, and unfortunately, there's a very limited number of jobs. Uh, you know, available through that publicly funded, uh, state funded program. Um, but so to have something, uh, you know, to get kids involved in the community, uh, the learning that, that goes on, the networking that'll happen, the mentoring that, that'll kind of take place, I'm sure is, is a great opportunity for them. And so, you know, yeah. especially for the younger youth, you know, 13, 14, 15 year olds, um, a chance to, to have them be involved in a meaningful community, community service project, uh, you know, like you said, the, the learning that goes on as part of that, I think, would be great. So we do get a lot of calls from parents, you know, saying, geez, you know, my son, I don't want uh, my son or daughter to be just kind of sitting on the couch mm-hmm. for the summer. Absolutely. And so getting getting them involved in something, you know, while a job would be ideal, um, you know, a paid, a paid opportunity would be ideal. This is at least something that can really kind of help help them, um, y- you know, right. build their skills and, and help the community at the same time. Sure, and you know it can also be a foot in the door. Uh, we've had many of our students get, you know, longer, um, you know, internships, etc., um, just by by volunteering. Um, so it can go a long way uh, towards that end as well. 
So we're, we're excited to be offering it. It's open to any student, um, you know, in, in our service area, which is in Worcester and the 31 surrounding towns. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know, one, one of the things that, that we're looking at is that, um, you know, why is there such a, you know, disparity or gap between, you know, kids from like the wealthier suburbs and, and you know, those teens tend to work more, have more work experience mm -hmm. um, by the time they graduate high school and go into college? And that, that kind of plays itself out that they have more, you know, also more opportunities, you know, later on. Um, it, mm -hmm. it seems like there's just more of a network kind of built in for those young people than, than kids, you know, maybe in the inner city or, or kids from, from uh, you know, a lower income family. And so what a great way to kind of build up that idea of like a social network or, or social capital, if you will. But by getting involved in these volunteer programs, so, you know, if, if um, you know, these young people are out there and they're doing some different projects, think of all the great people they're meeting and can use as contacts, you know, uh, you know later in life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one other thing I wanted to just um, let folks know is, you know, it, it is free. Um, you know, we, we, we feed the kids, we give them a T-shirt, and they, their participation is free. Um, so, you know, we really do welcome um, you know, everyone to get involved. Well, that's great. And I know they can also, in a lot of instances, work with their school guidance people to tie it back into a formal um, a school project or, you know, turn turn that learning into some school credit as well. I think I believe Absolutely. Public Schools has a, has a work plus uh, credit, elective credit that they're able to. Um, so that's something, uh, you know, a parent or, or the student could, could talk to their guidance folks about as well. Absolutely. So, uh, and to get involved in that, they should, they should contact the United Way? Contact the United Way. Um, the information, including the calendar, is, is on our website. And um, Alex Smith is our coordinator, or they can call me. But it's, um, yep, all the information is, is right there. Great. So, again, we're talking to Carrie Sandberg, the Director of Community Service at the United Way of Central Massachusetts. Yeah. Carrie, anything else that you want to highlight, uh, you know, the work that uh, United Way is doing, uh, you know, right now in the community? Well, we're, we're gearing up for our annual fundraising campaign. Um, you know, as, as many as uh, we, we put probably a couple thousand volunteers out in the community, but we have about 600 volunteers who work with us late summer, right through the, the fall, um, doing all kinds of things, all kinds of good work. So we're, we're gearing up for that. Um, and we have a very active, you know, volunteer base here at United Way. So folks that have an interest in that, uh, we always have um, opportunities here also at United Way if you want to get involved in fundraising, marketing. Uh, we have high school and college internships. So, you know, for folks that, that have that particular interest, uh, we welcome them as well. Well, again, all, all, you know, the gamut from young people through, uh, through seniors a yeah. great opportunity to get involved in, and make a difference in your community and, and help others. So thank you yeah. for being on the show. Happy to. No problem. Nice talking with you. Nice talking to you. Best of luck with the, uh, with the uh, uh, summer program and Dave Caring and with the fundraising effort as well. So thanks again for being on the show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so we're, uh, you know, it's always good to hear from, from folks that are doing such good work out in the community, uh, you know, the effort and time that's that's being put into all the projects, as she had mentioned, you know, hundreds of volunteers out there. I know the Day of Caring is something we've we've taken part in uh, over the years. It's just it's just a tremendous effort uh, and, and a tremendous amount of work on their part to put it all together. Speaking of a tremendous amount of work, uh, we have we another, another guest who is doing a tremendous amount of work in the community. Cedric, why don't you come on over? <laughs> Welcome, Cedric. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Thank you for having me on your show. Thanks for coming. So we have Cedric Arnold from uh, Future Focus Media. Yes, the Future Focus Media Co-op and Youth Training Institute. We are, um, we are kind of a little bit out the box of youth training because we, in addition to teaching the skills that uh, video production and editing on different softwares as far as uh, Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere, we teach our young people how to work in a co-op, which is a cooperative environment where we share everything within the Comp the we'll call them companies, but there's many co-ops that work with us. So let's say we in one building, we share the copier, the meeting room space, mm -hmm. the computer lab, but we also share in the rent. <laughs> <laughs> we share yeah. in the electricity bills. We share in the supply of paper. So all of those things form in the co-op. And then in addition for the youth, they learn how to do budgets, proposals, and submit bids because the idea is to take their skill, because it seems like everybody has a phone now with a camera on it. Yeah. So a lot of young people yeah. are doing their own 
version of storytelling. So now we're just incorporating the opportunity to basically make money off of your to formalize vehicles. that and to actually understand to, how the how the business end of that works. Right, and, and a great opportunity. For yeah, that. and it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. But stuff. it's rewarding, mm -hmm. like fruitful, you know. And one of the things that we would like to do is to. Uh, Tell more people about a cooperative way of working, uh, especially if you're a small business uh, and you're wanting to grow and you don't have all of the resources you have, but you have all of the resources you have for your particular project, mm -hmm. but you don't have the place to meet. You don't have the phone lines to make all of these calls. You mm -hmm. might not have uh, the up-to-date, like, uh, iMac version of whatever it is that you need, mm -hmm. and you just want to share in that. We, so it's almost as like a an incubator space? Yes, it, it, it's way. exactly like an incubator space, mm -hmm. but it's not under maybe an LLC like some of the um, – corporations are when okay. they go into these incubators they might be uh not even knowing if they want to be a sole proprietor do they need to be media related or no well we or? have in the because we all fall in this uh what's the roots which is under stone soup so uh we have like say epica which is for uh ex-prisoners and offenders who are looking to do activism in the community, mm -hmm. they're a part of us. With Steve, Stephen O'Neill? With Steve over great, there. Great work over there, yeah. Yep, and we have, uh, let's say, um, we have Epica. Uh, we have some green projects that you'll see around. Mm -hmm. Regional Environmental Council, uh, they are affiliated with us. So you have a right. lot of incubators who are more or less under the green economy Okay. that want to... Uh, kind of um, advance their, not just their belief in a green uh, environment, but also that you can make money off of the green environment, uh, whether it's, you know. So both versions of, uh, of the green economy, right? Yeah. And yeah. and the thing is so beautiful is that not only are you in, in involving yourself in the community and changing the way the community is receiving you because mm -hmm. of all of the new things that are happening around the green economy, but also that you are generating an income. So that way some people, oh, I can't stand my job. Oh, oh I can't stand my job, you know. You, but now you have this opportunity to work in something you like and get paid for it right. and to produce a livelihood for yourself. So those, all of those things mix well together. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what brings a lot of people to uh, wanting to be a part of the uh the co-op structure, and it's not just here in Worcester. There's co-ops all over the world. Um, there's co-ops in New York where I'm trying to get uh, some of my friends involved in that because um, these are guys that are felons. You know, these are the guys that, you know, not many people will hire you. But Mayor Bloomberg in New York City is doing initiatives to uh, get people who have felony backgrounds to Become your own business. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur. As, yeah. an entrepreneur. Instead of looking to get hired, look to start your own business. And uh, Bloomberg is behind it. Uh, the district attorney in New York, uh, Heinz, this is some of the stuff that he likes to sure. do. And then being in a co-op environment, you are learning how to build your business in a safe Well, way. I know that entrepreneurial... Um uh, mindset is something that we've been encouraging, uh, you know, not just uh, with young people, but, but uh, you know, to help young people as well understand that starting a business, having a vision, expanding it, doing a business plan, looking at the different angles, um, in and of itself, that process is very enlightening. Yes, right? it is. So they'll understand better how business works, um, whether they actually go forward with their own business. Um, and so... Um, so that's a, some exciting stuff to, to, yeah, to kind of reach into the, the youth and, and to help and to help uh, you know create that mindset with yeah. them. So. We try to bring in interns. Uh, one of the things that I'm really big on is um, showing our young people how to do something. Mm. So I try to bring a young person with me wherever I go. Um, I would have one now, but uh, she went to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good excuse. I guess. <laughs> you know, she went to fill out an application. She says she'll try to make it here before the close of this show. But I, I encourage that because one of the things is while you're with me, I'm going to introduce you to somebody who, if you don't have a job, mm -hmm. might can point you to the direction. And get them out All there about seeing, networking, uh, man. For those just joining, you're listening to The Working Lunch radio show. We've got guest Cedric Arnold from Future Focus Media. Yes. And so 
Uh, now I know I know that um, you just received a, a grant from the Worcester Arts Council. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Oh wow! This is the Frederick Douglass Reading, and this is um, for those that don't know Frederick Douglass, an abolitionist uh, in the 1800s. He was a born a, f- a slave, became free. Well, he escaped to his freedom, and then. He, I guess you would just call it self-taught himself uh, amongst, you know, just being around a lot of people, how to read, and became this orator, a person who had practiced what is now termed as preaching skills um, before they were considered a preaching skill, that he engaged his audience with the... uh, trying to get them to understand what it was to be a slave in America and coming through the pathway that he took from uh, the south uh, uh, under the Mason-Dixon line to the north where he was in Rochester, New York for this particular reading is what we're going to talk about is uh, the Frederick Douglass reading, the meaning of the 4th of July to the Negro. And, you know, some people will say the Negro, the black man, I'm African-American, and it's all the same guy, you know. Um, <laughs> but what he did at that time was so... Uh, so so I'm, I'm envisioning you have someone portraying Frederick Douglass actually doing the reading, or is it... Is it well, is this it, is reading is a, open a group to of everyone. Folks? It's, it's open. Last year we did it. It's 47 stanzas in the speech itself. So does everyone read it together, or is it is it... It's done part. by a. You know, everybody rep- does yeah. a piece. Like, say, oh, okay. if there's 47 people there, everybody get a stanza and they'll read it. And then some people are, you know, monotone and they read. And then we have some that take themselves back to yeah. if they were Frederick Douglass reading in front right, of people right. and they get, uh, you know, they get all riled up and they, you know, because the speech itself, if you read it, is very. Uh, it's emotional. It it's enlightening. Yeah, I misunderstood. I had thought it was a reenactor. Well, we who, do have a reenactor who, who comes dressed and and, and actually and all, and delivers that, it as if he were in fact Frederick n- Douglass. Well, we have a reenactor, but he is coming from the colored soldier's perspective. Oh wow! Yes, he is our historical reenactor. Um, Actually, uh, his name is uh, Joe Glover, if you know him, Trooper Joe. He is going to do that part. We have a scholar who will do a part Hmm. as far as the pre-reading, so that way to kind of get the crowd engaged. And then after that, we open it up to the general public. We have a Facebook page for the Frederick Douglass Reading for Worcester. So when and where is this happening? This is July 1st, 12 p.m. um, in the back of City Hall. We're hoping for no rain. Hmm. Um, the rain is the same day if it's a rain date, but we'll move it inside to the mm-hmm. Levi Lincoln room in city hall. So it's 455 main street behind city hall. And, and Cedric, uh, what other organizations are involved besides, uh, future focus media and the Worcester arts council? Uh, we have the city of Worcester, the cultural coalition. We have mass humanities. We have, uh, our program is, uh, this grant is funded by the Worcester arts council, the Worcester Public Library, uh, American Antiquarian Society, uh, the Historic Museum, uh, Holy Cross College. That's a great array I of, mean, a we great have, of them. Huh? And, yeah. and, but there's still room for more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of the things that we're looking forward to is the uh, setup for next year. Okay. Um, because the, the idea, and this was brought up at one of the meetings, is that this is not just a once a year type of thing, mm-hmm. that okay. we engage the community with activities throughout the year so that way when it culminates next year, 2014, that we have done a couple of different activities that engage people, brought them in, and maybe it might not be particularly with the Frederick Douglass reading of the 4th of July speech, but it may have something to do with where do we go from now that we have said this speech? You know, how can we enact some of these challenges or overcome some of these challenges that he portrayed in 1862 mm. that are now still, you know, oh, prevalent today, yeah. today, you know. And, and that's one of the things that I'm glad that you guys opened up your forum for us is to let people know that, you know, in addition to reading your history and knowing your history, um, the fact is that you have to learn 
mm-hmm. from your history in the full in the in the growth area of going forward, um, and particularly with this show because you guys are work related and workforce related, mm-hmm. I was thinking of how. Um, during Frederick Douglass at his speech, he talked about how the black man was a laborer. He was an architect. He was an accountant during those times, but we still were not considered a man. A man. Mm. We were not considered men. And that was um, 1862. Now, if you go 100 years later, you know, with the, um, and just to give you some background, this year is the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation that was uh, mm-hmm. given by uh, Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln, to the country, which was the path that p- most people seen as uh, opening up sl- uh, slave yeah, holding yeah. states <laughs> so that way the slaves can now become free. Mm-hmm. Uh, eight, 1962, we have I Have a Dream speech by uh, D- Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, and he uh, announced some of those same challenges in his speech that, you know, he looked at it as uh, five scores, mm-hmm. meaning five times the score 20. A hundred years ago is when he was talking about it, mm-hmm. and it was prevalent in 1962. And if you don't mind, I just want to give a, a quick little stanza that related to what he said then to where we're at now. Let me just uh, remind people, we're, our guest is Cedric Arno from Future Focus Media. So uh, with that, we do have a, a minute or two. So yeah. I'm going to jump. It'll be real quick because I just want to get this one stanza. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given its colored people a bad check, a check that has come back marked insignificant, insufficient funds. And the reason I I pulled that particular stanza out is not that we, uh, as far as black people in America, are not working. Sometimes it's the opportunity to work is where we are shortchanged. And let's say if America, you know, sneezes, the black community catches a cold, (laughs) you know, and then that is one of the things that we have to learn. But we also have to challenge ourselves in particularly the black community that we can do beside in regardless of what's going on, mm-hmm. but also to persevere and press on and that these are the challenges that are here with us today. So I want to thank you guys for having us on. Well, and thank you for, for coming. Now, how can folks get involved? Where you know, Our theme is volunteerism, and, okay. and certainly you know, you're, you're open to, to having folks yeah. volunteer with either this a specific project or, or other work that you're doing. So how can folks get in touch with you? Uh, info at futurefocusmedia.org. That is one direct way as far as uh, email. Uh, a lot of people are into emails now. Um, I think they're, you know, get, <laughs> depersonalizing people. Yeah. But if you want a phone number, you can give me a call. I'm using my cell phone number as the link for the Frederick Douglass reading. So as you're going to see it on flyers everywhere. Uh, it's 774-253-1131 for people who want to get involved in either Future Focus or the Frederick Douglass reading. Uh, we do a lot of things in well, the community. Well, thank you. Yeah, so, thank you again for, again, com- thank for coming you guys on. for having me on. Thanks, Cedric. And uh, we're going to take a short break now and then, uh, and then come back. Sean's going to wrap up the program. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. You're in tune to WCUW 91.3 FM, community radio serving central Massachusetts, online at wcuw.org. And we're back now. Uh, again, thanks again for the uh, the interview, Cedric. I think we've got a lot of information, and it sounds like a great event coming yeah, up. Yeah, and, and I, I, I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to use this forum. I, I think that the use of this forum by what you guys are doing now is going to generate uh, a an enormous amount of information for our public and for the community at large. So I want to thank you guys for at least putting this together because sometimes the challenge in our community is information. Yeah. And you guys are doing your part in sharing and disseminating information to the masses. So, you know, if there was a, if you could see it now, I gave them a thumbs up, <laughs> you know, like if we was on Facebook on a like. So, you know, this is one of the things that we like about the community and, um, I consider Worcester the heartbeat of the Commonwealth. So with this beat right here, 
will generate and flow through the arteries that we can imagine to be Mass Pike or 128 or Route 2 or 290. And just imagine this arteries going throughout and this information going throughout the Commonwealth. So salute these guys for doing their part in uh, keeping our body healthy. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. So actually, speaking of the community, from, from time to time, we like to open up to, um, to the emails. So we have people come in, they, they send in emails, and we had one that was um, kind of went with the theme of volunteerism for our, uh, for our show. And so I'd, I'd like to read that. There's, this is from Tim from Worcester, and he writes, Hey, Working Lunch Team, I've been unemployed for over a year now. I've gone on a number of interviews but just haven't found the right fit. I've also noticed that employers have asked me a lot about being unemployed for over a year, and I am starting to think that this unemployment gap is hurting my chances of getting a job. What do you think? So I know, I know um, sometimes employers, they'll see that employment gap, and they think they might assume, oh, this guy might be lazy or this woman might be uh, not motivated. Um, and that might not be the case. It might just be – it kind of creates a conundrum where I'm looking for work. Right. And that's why I have a gap. That's why I am not working because I'm <laughs> exactly, looking for work. Exactly, exactly. And, and that is some of the challenges. Uh, and it's not just with young people, even though I work with young people now. But I was also one of those people who was unemployed. I mean, it's been a while. You know, thank you, Jesus, you know, <laughs> that I'm not, you know, that I have a job. But um, when that was the case, I had the opportunity to uh, coach basketball with you know, but it was girls. Yeah. Not that girls well, no. are not good basketball players. <laughs> We're going down a weird street I here. <laughs> I don't want you to blow up the phone lines. But, you know, these girls kept me occupied. Yeah. And then it kept me, as far as my resume, active. Exa- and that's and that's actually where we wanted to go with this. Because at the Career Center, they've started a volunteer connections program. Okay. And I sat, sat down with the coordinator there, and I've actually got the interview here. So let me let me play this for everybody. Uh, Wendy Gould, the Volunteer Connections Program Specialist at Workforce Central. How are you doing today, Wendy? I'm good, and you, Sean? Good, good. So we wanted to talk a little bit about the new Volunteer Connections Program. Um, so maybe, first off, you could just tell me a little bit of an overview of the program, like what, what the design is. The design of the program is for um, those that are unemployed, especially the long-term unemployed um, to get hired by developing their skills and the opportunity to network through volunteer opportunities. So some of these long-term unemployed uh, folks can have a volunteer opportunity instead of... Yes, where they can gain recent and relevant experience to um, include on their resume, which your employers are looking for. Yeah, absolutely. I know we we talked a little bit on the show about uh, how employers, if there's a gap in in resume history, like work history on a resume, that they kind of look at that and say, well, what happened here? You know, so the, the Volunteer Connections is a way that people can volunteer and kind of fill that gap. That's correct. So can you tell me how the program works? The monthly workshops that we offer, along with the quarterly exchange event, um, help job seekers access what they might want to do and help connect them with places that might fit their needs. We help them see where they should connect and help broker the connection between the job seeker and the nonprofit organization through the exchange events, but really put the responsibility on the job seeker to make the connection and work out the terms of the volunteership. Oh, okay, cool. And so they're able to kind of network with, with employers once a month and, and say, hey, I, I design websites, and a nonprofit might say, you know, we, we're in need of somebody that can help us revamp our website. Yeah. And then they would go and they'd work out the details together. Yeah. The quarterly exchange event gives them the face-to-face opportunity with nonprofit representatives. The monthly workshop um, is more on an, um, a small group level where I go through the benefits of the volunteer opportunities and connect those job seekers that are within the workshop together and then they can discuss what skills they're trying to obtain, um, the scaps they're trying to build on, and go from there. Oh, okay, so those networking events are quarterly, That's but correct. the workshop is monthly. That's correct. Okay, and, and are there any sort of restrictions for job seekers in the program? Our particular program involves um, nonprofit or municipal placements only. Um, for-profit placements are not allowed at this time, and those that are collecting unemployment insurance can only volunteer up to 19 hours per week so that they can s- still meet the guidelines of unemployment to be job searching. Right, still doing their job search. Okay, and uh, how's the program been working so far? Have you had any success? Or? 
It's been working very well since our first quarterly event in December of 2012 and continuing through our monthly volunteer connections workshop that began in February of this year. This program has involved just under 100 job seekers. Wow. Several participants have gone on to volunteer opportunities. Um, feedback that I've received from several of them is this program has given them the opportunity to network and gain new skills oh, and okay. also to the benefit of the nonprofit to take on the skills that someone is already bringing to them at no cost. Right. So it's a win-win for yeah, both. Yeah, both parties in, involved are, are receiving you know, some sort of benefit from the program, it seems. And so the, the job seeker can kind of get a foot in the door, do some networking, kind of prove their, it, prove their skills and also improve their skills. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, the nonprofit is receiving. Some of these short staff nonprofits can kind of take on somebody without having that expense. It also gives them the opportunity that if a project became available at an organization that they've had an interest in or would like to gain yep. skills in that, that they can express their interest to be part of a team or work on something individually to uh, gain those additional skills for their resume. Yeah. So so the program is, has been going on for how long now? Uh, approximately six months. Oh, great. It's great to see Workforce Central doing these kind of innovative programs. It certainly is, and it's been well received by all participants. Good. And so if, if listeners at home are interested in getting involved, or even a nonprofit is interested in getting involved, how would they, how would they go about doing that? If someone is not already a member of Workforce Central Career Center, they must first attend our one-time Career Center seminar to become a member. After attending this seminar, they contact me, our Volunteer Connections Program Specialist, and they're scheduled to attend an upcoming Volunteer Connections workshop. At the conclusion of the workshop, um, I give them a list of nonprofit organizations that are directly associated with our program. Mm -hmm. And the list includes the type of volunteer opportunities that are available, along with the contact information of the organization. If an organization is interested in being part of the Workforce Central program, please feel free to contact myself also, and I will direct them to either our next quarterly exchange event or take their information and share it with all program participants. Great, great. Well, it sounds like a great program. Uh, we're we're you know, happy, to, happy to see this being so successful, and um, we're also happy to have you taking a couple of minutes out of your day to talk with us. Thank you, Sean. So thanks, Wendy. So again, you can see that there there's some things that people can do to kind of fill that resume gap. And and that's what we're looking for. Hopefully there'll be people to take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. So well, then notice we're running out of time here. So thanks again for listening and watching. Thank see you, you next month. Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more.